Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Tell em Steve Dave with two special guests who we don't see that often around these parts anymore, Kevin J. <laughs> Good to be back. For those that don't know, man, like uh, I've known these cats since post high school. We bonded over Batman. There was a lot of hoopla coming about the upcoming Batman movie. Is that what it was? And you and you mentioned, are you excited to see it? And I was just, I was leery and apprehensive because Keaton was involved. I thought you were leery and apprehensive that I asked you a question. <laughs> You're like, why is he asking me about could, Batman? Could what does he want to suck my dick? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Walt. I'm manager here at The Secret Stash. The Secret Stash is New Jersey's premier comic book store. We try to carry everything a fanboy needs. Comics, toys, Kevin Smith merchandise. Hey Mike. I wouldn't consider myself a tough boss, but I expect a lot from my guys because I expect a lot from myself. Walter is Batman. He's ruthless, he's cunning, and he gets the job done. Here at The Stash, not only do we sell comics, but we also buy them. How you doing? On any given day, we have people bringing in comics from the 40s, magazines, action figures. People bring in mostly comic book collections that were printed in the millions, which uh, I wish people would just chuck in the landfill. Michael is my second in command here at the stash. So we're all set, huh? The character I would most liken Michael to would have to be Mr. Fantastic. He has to stretch in many different areas to cover all the things we ask him to do. As far as comics and knowledge goes, Mike is second only to Walt. I have a passion for comic books, <laughs> which is something that was frowned upon in the 80s and 90s, but now it's really cool to let your geek flag fly. Does Fat Albert qualify as a comic book character? <laughs> <laughs> If the secret stash were to assign the title of official ballbuster to anyone, it would probably be me. In the fanboy comic book world, uh, Brian would probably be the Joker to Walt's Batman. Brian's role at the secret stash is nebulous at best. Brian is actually not an employee of the, of the secret stash. He, uh, he lives in his mother's basement. He is the wisecracking older brother that none of us wanted. Not everybody takes it with good humor, but f him. Today you should go down to the high school when it lets out and start bothering girls. All right. <laughs> Ming is our computer guru slash whipping boy. It's his own fault. He makes it too easy. It breaks my heart to see Brian bust on Ming. I'm like, hey, you want a job? You want a job? Because Ming has no defense. Those guys are uh, always on me for something, it seems like. Uh, but, you know, I love him nonetheless. <laughs> I'm going to text his wife and tell him he's creeping on chicks. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in the secret stash today. I'm going to sell this gamer figure. <laughs> Done my research. I'm thinking I'm going to get a thousand bucks for it. Can I help How you? How are you guys doing? I have this figurine. Gamera. Gamera, yeah. Can I take a look at it? Sure. So, let's talk turtle. Talk turtle. <laughs> talk gamera. Does the piece have any sentimental attached? Like, do you have yeah, anything to you? It really does. I mean, gamera, he was kind of the underdog in comparison to Godzilla. Right. And we helped out people instead of killing people like Godzilla did. And you know, I was born three months premature, always a step behind people and things like that. And so I found a lot of relation in Gamera. I could, you know, as a kid, like if Gamera was real, mm -hmm. I think he would befriend you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Dominic, um, I'm definitely interested. Well, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, this figure, um, there's a lot of counterfeiting that goes on with them. It's like, you know, counterfeiting a hundred dollar bill. Okay. In an unrelated matter, can I interest you in a Gucci wallet? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine you have your choice to counterfeit money, jewels, anything, and you go for Gamera? Like, who's that guy? You know how huge giant monsters are in Japan? Really? It's not like America. Americans would. This know. is worth more than money? Yes. You're saying, okay. I'm really excited about this figure. I have a lot of clients who would be interested in this. And I don't think I'd have any problem moving it, but I gotta make sure this piece is the real deal. So I gotta call in the man who knows everything about Japanese toys. Rob Bruce. How you guys doing? Dominic, this is Rob Bruce. Hey, how are you? Good, these how are, are you? These are our resident toy expert. Walt and the guys at Secret Stash usually call me when they get a rare Japanese figurine in because they know I'm a real avid collector. And... Ah, camera. It's nice. They know that I can tell what's real and what isn't just from having so many toys over the last couple of years. It's a nice figure. Is it the real deal? Well, <laughs> let's, let's get to that. This is the Nito Gamera, 
would have been produced in the early 70s. A figure like this in 1972 would have gone for probably equivalent of $5. The minis came on big cards and they sold for 75 The first one in the line of all the cameras and they've made 30 the first few were just kid-oriented Saturday movies. You watched Gamera fight aliens. They did all sorts of kaiju figures. That's what Japanese monster figures are known as kaiju Gamera figures. was the friends of all children. And it later became the defenders of the universe. You know I was clean shaven when, we, when I walked in here, right? <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ, is it real or not? Well, let's get to that, right? Now, it, it looks like the original. I mean, there's no argument there. It's bright color plastic. And the teeth are like really clean. In this condition, eleven, twelve hundred dollars isn't that unreasonable. Eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, eleven hundred dollars definitely could go for eleven hundred dollars. But I think that um, this probably is not an original figure. There's no playware. There's no shelfware. It's got really shiny feet. I'd be ninety-five percent positive that this would be a reproduction. I think realistically in this market, this figure is probably worth $125, $150 on a good day. Uh, that's kind of tough. Dominic, if I'm going to sell for a buck and a quarter, you know, I got an overhead, I got a store to run here. Well, I like you, Dominic, you know. Me, me and you have something in common. I was born a day earlier than I was supposed to be. Hey, very nice. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing the connection. 50 bucks and I'll throw in a free comic book, a free Gamera comic book. I, you know what? I think I'll do it. You're gonna do it? I'll do it. All right, Dominic. Didn't exactly get a thousand dollars, but I did get 50 bucks in a comic. It's not actually gonna help me pay my college loans, but you know, help pay the cable bill for a month at least. I would not believe somebody coming off the street would be like, tell me, they'll tell me a million sob stories to get the most money out of me. Right. So you really, it's all a scam. Am I? He's yeah, like, you gotta a go into that. You gotta have boy. that mode. My boy, Walt, help me. <laughs> like, I've seen pictures of kids before. <laughs> my mom just died. I need money to sell my comics to, for a funeral. I don't even, that doesn't mean anything to me. I got a kid. He needs a kidney. I gotta sell this Action Comics number one. Well, I don't have that kind of money hanging around. I'd have to call you in. And then I wouldn't even tell you about the kidney because I know you'd fucking buckle and be like, give him, give him the money. <laughs> it's a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I am well. What can I do for you? I'm at Secret Stash today because I've been driving myself crazy looking for issue 29 of Astonishing Tales. Longtime X-Men fanatic, collected since I was 12. My favorite current title right now is Uncanny X-Force, okay. and it featured Deathlock in it, right. so I collected all these Astonishing Tales. Okay. I found 25 through 36. I'm missing 29. Would you happen to have it here? Um, we don't. So Laurie came into the secret stash today trying to complete a run of Astonishing Tales. She's missing number 29, which is a fairly rare comic. Deathlock was in Astonishing Tales from 25. Uh, it was in 26, 27, and 28. Mm -hmm. Number 29, they missed their deadline. And this, either Doug Monch or Rich Buckler missed a deadline. Astonishing Tales had to go out, so they put a reprint of Guardians of the Galaxy from uh, Marvel Super Heroes 18, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why it's such a rare book. Okay. What I can do is make a few phone calls. There are a couple of avenues I have open to me. Okay. Comic book collectors get really geeky when it comes to their collections. So when we don't have a comic book in stock, we'll try and find it for the customer. May I just ask, is that a Stan Lee oh. tattoo on your arm? Yes, it actually is. So you're, you're a geek uh, girl. I'm big time. Um, I got to meet him in uh, October at New York Comic Con, actually. So uh, when I met him, I had a complete nerd boner. I mean, I freaked out. He's Stan the man for a reason. I have a court order uh, barring me from any contact with oh. him anymore. <laughs> He's an awesome guy, though. He looks like an angel when he's sleeping. <laughs> and I'm here at the stash today to sell a piece of cover art that I got. It's a cover from Animal Man. It's uh, drawn by uh, Brian Boland, who doesn't draw anymore. I paid $2.50 for this Animal Man cover about two decades ago. So I'm figuring it's got to be worth at least $7.50. I got a cover art for you. Wow, nice. Animal Man number one. 20 cover? 20, yeah, it is, it is nice. 
I was pretty intrigued by this piece. The issue itself is pretty famous because that, that storyline was the first time that a comic sort of broke the fourth wall. It's uh, the issue where he tries to commit suicide. Brian Bolin, huh? Yeah, from uh, Judge Check Dredd, 2018. Nice. Hey, where'd you get it? Uh, convention. Bought it from Brian himself. Really? Yeah, and he doesn't use pencils anymore. It's all on the computer these days. Now, just looking at it, though, it doesn't. it's not the normal comic book size artwork. What really struck me as odd was the size of it. It seemed to be almost like a thumbnail, which is like what an artist does to get an idea of what he's going to do before he takes it to pencils. It may have been the sketchy sent to DC for approval. Yeah. As you can see, there's changes. He's got his costume here. Yeah, that's he's wearing right. Yeah, clothes he's there. got the civvies on. Yeah. yeah. But there's changes. There's some subtle changes. Why are you moving it? I just got married like two weeks ago, so I gotta yeah. pay some bills. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wife, the pay. wife's making you move this piece? Uh, she, actually, she uh, doesn't even know about it. She doesn't even know I was in the comics. Oh, really? She never knew, so kind of need to get clear the house, clear the attic out of the stuff before she finds out. It's a secret. You're like this could queer the deal. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I never, I never brought up comics with her. It's not exactly the coolest thing to say when you're, you know, dating a girl that oh, I got a bunch of Batman's upstairs in the attic. You want to go read them? All right. Well, what are you looking for? Well, I paid two fifty for it in close to twenty years ago, and I got some big bills to pay. I'm looking seven fifty. Seven fifty. I really do like this piece. I don't know if I could do seven fifty though. The sketch art showed the main character in his costume, but what went to print and what was actually on the cover was the main character out of costume. If I was to try to sell this as original artwork from the cover, I would have a hard time answering why it looks so different. Probably the best I could do is 250. 250. 250. Can we meet in the middle? 500 somewhere? 300 and you got a deal. Uh, you know, I got, I got bills to pay, but you know, I, I gotta say no. I say no? I, I think I got some talking to do when I get home. <laughs> thanks for bringing it in. Like I said, it's a beautiful piece. All right, All right. thanks, thanks a lot. Nice. Ming, most historically accurate time travel movie. Most historically accurate, it's got to be Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. They got the princesses, they bring back Napoleon. But wouldn't Napoleon be afraid of uh, a water slide? <laughs> <laughs> ah, he seemed to have fun with it in the movie. He's also very short, so don't you think people would smack him in the mouth if like, he's pushing past him and sh like he was? Like yeah, me. like if I see you like trying to push past me and my kid to get to the top of the water slide, yeah. I'm just going to hammer you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Walt sends us over to Robert Bruce's house to uh, acquire Astonishing Tales number 29. What are you Downstairs. cooking dinner in here? All right, come on down. Watch your step. Welcome to the uh, dungeon of uh, toy mayhem. Got so much stuff. Where'd you get all this? Been collecting for the last uh, 25 years. I collect uh, just about anything. 60s, 70s, 80s related. Action figures, monster toys, Godzilla, Ultraman, comic books, records, marbles, Cracker Jack premiums. You name it, I've either owned it, found it. I probably have close to 100,000 items in my basement. I know I have the book that, that you guys are looking for, but I don't know where it's at. We're gonna have to dig for it. Rob Bruce's basement is small, it's hot, it's sweaty, kind of like Ming, and we now have to search through all these different boxes to find the comic. Are they in any kind of order? Uh, yeah, sort of. There's toys, comic books everywhere, and we just start sniffing through all that junk. That's it. Yeah, we're telling Walt I found it. How much do you want for it? 20 bucks. I'll give you 25. Save you just time so we can get out of here. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. See you again. Girls come into the comic book store, but maybe maybe more would come in if we had some girls, you know, behind the counter. And I asked, do you have this certain issue? A tee -hee, I don't know. Oh my God, what is this a girl? Did I go back in time to the 50s or something like that? I don't think any of you guys have seen a girl in, in decades, man. Oh, they don't tee -hee nowadays? It's no, so, it's now it's all, I'll them. come in and be like, hey, do you have Superman? She's like, get out of here, fat loser. <laughs>